Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the dojo. It is January 22nd. It is 8.36 in the morning in Bangkok, Thailand. I've had a busy morning. I just recorded um, two interviews. So coming up, you're going to be hearing from Nathan Dalton talking about how he's expanding his notary signing business. And I also have a great interview with Fernando D'Souza, who has a remarkable plan B, which is an Airbnb on a beach in Brazil. He's going to talk about how he came to that, how he's progressing on that. And uh, I think you'll find both those uh, upcoming interviews very inspiring. All right. We also have upcoming uh, 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 simulcast, uh, which is an interview that Harry, uh, the rideshare guy, Campbell did um, over on the other podcast. And we're going to uh, bring that to my audience over here. So a lot of good stuff coming up. Uh, You may wonder, what's a day in Thailand look like? Well, that's part of it. I I get up early and I get some work done. Uh, After I record this, I'm going to uh, process these and upload them. And I have an assistant. She will uh, put them online and schedule them for me. Then I'm going to take a walk down to the marketplace, which is a couple blocks away, and uh, probably have some chicken soup for breakfast with a Diet Coke and, uh, and then take a walk. I'm going to walk five miles today and, uh, and then relax in the afternoon, maybe get a foot massage and uh, do a little bit more work uh, later. So that's kind of the typical day. I work in the morning, uh, get a little exercise, get a little relaxation in during the afternoon, maybe do a little more work in the evening. Uh, sometimes I go out late and um, meet a friend have some drinks and uh yeah it's pretty great so if you've never been to thailand i highly recommend it uh bangkok i had ne- never spent much time in uh, uh until this trip um, i lived in chiang mai i lived in phuket i spent s- some time in sukhothai uh, but i really like bangkok everything except for the air quality the air quality here is terrible um, i happen to have gotten a re- remarkable fantastic airbnb it has me on the 47th floor of a tall building. This is my condo. It's a one bedroom. And um, you can just look outside and see uh, it's just smoggy. Think of like LA on its worst day. That's kind of what it, what it looks like here. And uh, that's why people, a lot of people walk around with masks on, you know, those little breathing masks. But what we're going to do today is uh, cover some news and uh, some Kind of big news uh, came out uh, today. Uh, if you were um, a YouTube uh, on our YouTube list, uh, you saw I made a video called "Uber will let some drivers set their rates, but there's a catch." Um, that's actually the title that Harry gave it. I had the uh, title. It was something like "Uber figures out a way to pay." Uh, no, Uber Uber change makes driving more confusing and we get paid less (laughs) but i guess that was controversial so harry went with uber will let some drivers set their rates but there's a catch so uh, if you haven't seen that video yet by all means go uh go watch it because i go into some detail about uh, this latest change but i'm going to talk a little bit about it here all right so this first article is entitled um Let's see, this is from Gizmodo. 
uh, and it says, okay, but have you tried just making them employees? Um, this is, uh, this is about, um, all the things that Uber is trying to do in order to avoid assembly bill five. So, um, basically what they're, what they're doing today, the big announcement today was that, so this change is going into effect in Sacramento, Palm Springs, and Santa Barbara. And basically, uh, Uber, Uber is, is saying to the drivers, you can now control your prices. Um, you can set your own prices. And that's not really what's, what's up. So if you're around the airport and you want to get a, make an airport pickup, um, and you can set your like a surge, your own surge multiplier all the way up to five. So you could say four X. So that way, if you get a ping, that passenger is going to pay four X surge on that ride. But then you got to ask, you say, well, that's great. You know, that's like four rides in one. Yeah. But who's who, what passenger is going to pay four X when there are other drivers who are at one X, right? And the way it's the, the rides are going to get assigned is the first ping is going to go to the driver that's in the area that has the lowest price, right? So what's going to happen is there's going to be this race to the bottom and everyone's just going to be at one. Because if you go to two or three, chances are you're not going to get a ride or you're going to wait a very, very long time, which then makes it not worth doing. So that's one component. And the second component is that um, if you're in an area that has a surge of, say, 1.5, you can opt out of surge, again, lowering the price uh, so that your, your car shows up um, in the field of cars as the best opportunity, the lowest price, and you're going to get the ping. So again, drivers are going to lower the surge and, uh, and, and have no surge, and we're going to get paid less, but it's something you're going to have to do if you want to get a ride. Because if you're trying to keep the surge, uh, chances are you're not going to get rides um, or you're going to have to wait a very long time. So uh, just, just so that you can stay busy, you're going to lower your price. So this really uh, must be important to Uber that they give the patina, the look of uh, giving drivers some control. Because if you think about it, when drivers lower the uh, surge, that means Uber and Lyft are also going to be make less money. And I think this is why they're only doing it in three markets, because uh, they want to test it and see how much this lowers their revenue, because they don't want to lose revenue as a result of this. So they're going to test it out. So this article poses the question, okay, you know, you can try, you can try all this stuff, but have, have, you, have, you, have you tried just making them empl employees? Wouldn't that be easier? Wouldn't that be easier than uh, all, all of the stuff uh, that they're, they're, they're doing? Uh, the article says, uh, Uber's latest change will set up a bidding system that lets drivers increase fares in 10% increments up to a maximum of five times Uber's set price. Uber will match the rider with the driver who has the lowest price. Starting next week, Uber plans to let drivers also set fares lower than Uber's price. In addition to choosing a higher multiple, Drivers will be able to charge as little as one-tenth Uber set price, decreasing fares 10% at a time. This, uh, they will also be allowed to opt out of surge pricing. So what's going to yeah, so happen? And this article says the same thing, is it's just going to drive prices down. Surge is going to go away because no one's, gonna, no one's ever going to get it because everyone's going to go down to the, to the lowest uh, prices. So... Um, it says, uh, according to one estimate, if Uber were to treat its drivers as employees, it would cost them in the ballpark of $500 million annually. With all the work Uber has piled onto its developers to get out of this jam at whatever salaries those people pull in, with all the confusion it's putting drivers through, who are more, now more likely to predominantly use a competitor's rideshare app, and all the money this deeply unprofitable company has or intends to blow fighting AB5, in ballot measures, astroturf campaigns, legal fees, etc., you have to wonder: Did they ever think uh, making the drivers and employees might just be easier? Good question. All right, second article I pulled out 
is uh, Cuomo doesn't care who else gets hurt by his war on the gig economy. So, you know, we know what's going on in California. We have AB5, which uh, went into law January 1st. Cuomo also thinks uh, drivers should be treated as employees. And uh, of course, he's getting pushback because companies uh, like things the way they are. So uh, Cuomo clearly also doesn't give a fig that contractors might lose uh, their jobs if they have to be classified as employees, since companies that can't afford to hire them would be barred from doing business with them any other way, or that his change could lead to fewer services like Uber drivers and higher prices for customers. See, now, this is exactly what I, I find so irritating. Yes, there should be, in my humble opinion, there should be higher prices for customers. I mean, what people are paying for Uber and Lyft are, are artificially low prices because it's they've been they've been subsidized by venture capital. Now, if they were to raise their prices, then they would have more money, right, for the drivers. So what's happened though, they're the, 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 like the public campaign is that for these companies to survive, these poor companies to survive, they have to treat the drivers the way they've been treating them, which if you've been a driver, and I have, I've got 26,000 trips, four years under my belt, you know that what we were paid four years ago and what we're getting now is significantly different. Things are not better. Things are getting worse. And Instead of saying, well, that's just the way things are and we can't change it, that's not true. They can raise prices, and with that extra revenue, they can treat us, uh, we can be treated with the, the, the protections and the safeties of an employee, and it, it would work. But no, that's not what's happening. Uh, the people who started these companies are, you know, gazillionaires. And many of the people who are in the first you know, wave of employees, they're millionaires. And we are the drivers and uh, we do not get paid uh, enough for, for what we do. And that is why all this is happening. Uh, because this is kind of a, it's like this wave, this gig economy is like a wave. And if we're not careful, we're going to have a, a society in which there are, uh, you know, haves, and have-nots. And, and that's why unions came into existence, so that the have-nots could pull together and have some clout. And uh, as a result, uh, you know, em uh, employees uh, were able to get things like health, health insurance and retirement plans and, and all, the, all of those things that, you know, two generations ago were normal for people when they when they started a, a corporate career or any kind of a work career, whether you're a plumber um, or a white collar uh, executive. It's a big issue and it's just going to keep getting worked out. And, um, you know, everyone's got their sides on it. I've, I think I've made my side pretty clear, but, um, you know, that's uh, that's what makes the world go around. So we'll just keep keep following the news and keep seeing how it how this thing uh, progresses. Uh, but as of today, Uber made another move to make an argument in court that uh, the drivers are treated as an independent contractors and they have all, they meet, they meet the requirements to be an independent contractor. I say that's bullshit. I say this is not allowing me to set my price based on the quality that I can provide. Uh, saying that I have a five, five-star rating and someone else has a 4.5 you know, that's just based on 100 rides. I mean, that's so arbitrary. All right. Next, next article, Uber vending machines didn't work, so now your ride is a moving vehicle. So recently, Uber announced that Cargo, which is the company that provided um, those snacks, right? So there's snacks that are inside your car uh, that you could sell. Uh, actually, you give, give away some of them for free, and they had to uh, go onto an app and then they could get some free snacks. And then there are some things that people could buy as well. Apparently it didn't work out so well and uh, they're coming out of the cars. Uh, but they are now looking at doing uh, a program similar to what Firefly does where you've got a billboard on top of your car and uh, that's another way to generate revenue. Which just makes sense, you know? I mean, 
so many eyeballs see your car as you drive, you know, for eight to 10 hours in a day. Uh, it's just this perfect opportunity to put some messages up there. And if you've seen the Firefly cars uh, driving around in San Francisco, we've got them. You know, I look, you know, you see it and it's a it's a lit up, you know, billboard with action and video and and, uh, you know, a story to tell. And you're in traffic and you just look and you see it and it makes an imp it makes an impression. So I think it's a good direction. It makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, you got to ask yourself as a driver, do you want to have that on your car all the time? You know, but um, if you're driving full time, why not? You know, if you can make some extra money just by having something on top of your car, um, I actually prefer that than having to, to have food and snacks inside of my car and uh, try and sell stuff while I'm driving. So just having a, a billboard on top of my car uh, for me would be definitely preferable. All right, next story from the Ch South China Morning Post, Bollywood. So that's a Indian, uh, Indian Hollywood. Bollywood star Sonam Kapoor berates Uber after scariest experience with London driver. All right. The actress shared her ordeal on Twitter, saying her driver was apparently unstable and was yelling and shouting during the journey. The Uber incident comes a week after she criticizes British Airways for allegedly losing her luggage for the second time this month. So what do you guys think? Does she just have a real issue with life? I mean, she's had two pretty public outbursts uh, within, a, within a week's time. I don't know who Sonam Kapoor is. There's a picture of her here. She looks like a, a, a young woman. Um, she says, I was shaking by the end of it. She tweets to her 12.8 million followers on Wednesday. Um, I tried complaining on your app, she's speaking to Uber, and just got multiple disconnected replies by bots. You guys need to update your system. The damage is done. There's nothing more you can do. So it's a sad day for Uber. They lost one of one, one uh, customer. Um, and I, I don't really understand what was uh, the... The scariest experience, scariest, that would mean in her whole life, this was the scariest. So I don't know, either she's lived a pretty, you know, uh, tame life um, or something really terrible happened. And um, I don't know what that terrible thing was, but that's the news. All right. Now, last, last thing I wanted to talk about is uh, this article, which I found this, this made sense to me. It says uh, Uber CEO made a huge mistake. So that, of course, is Dara Khosrow Shahi. Khosrow Shahi. Uh, Uber CEO made a huge mistake, and it just may signal the end of Uber. Uh, it's a little dramatic, but you know, clickbait. You got to put make your make the title of your uh, your stuff uh, sound really dramatic. It just might signal the end of Uber, but it could be. By allowing founder and former CEO Travis Kalanick to walk away, Dara K lost more than experience. He lost a key part of Uber's heart and soul. And I do feel this is the case. I do. Um, because uh, Dara K is like, you know, he's like your dad, right? He's like, um, you know, he knows business and, you know, he's doing, he's doing the right things. But you also need like that crazy uncle that's kind of like your heart and soul, right? The kind of guy that fires you up, right? And um, that was that was Travis Klanick. So uh, Travis Klanick sold all his stock. He's not on the board. He has basically washed his hands of, of, uh, of Uber. And what the article says is um, Khosra Shahi uh, brought along much of what Klanick was looking for. Some of the new CEO's early moves showed signs of high emotional intelligence, the ability to invest in people and build relationships. But Kalanick had something that Khosra Shahi didn't. Kalanick had the enthusiasm, the passion, the belief that Uber could really transform the world. If you watch Khosra Shahi's interviews, you don't see that same excitement. And that's to be expected. You simply can't replace a founder's passion. That's exactly why Khosra Shahi was brought in to rein in Kalanick's enthusiasm, to bring calm to the storm. 
But as time went on, it became clear that Uber needed both Kalanick and Kajrasahi to increase its chances of success. So uh, I agree. I agree. Uh, Uber has changed. Uber has changed. Uh, they, they have become uh, a softer and gentler since Kalanick uh, left. But Kalanick also brought a fire. He brought a passion. He brought an energy. And, and uh, I do think Uber uh, misses that. And um, I think it makes them a weaker company because of it. So I found this article really uh, great. I wanted to end that article, uh, end, end this episode with that article because uh, it certainly makes sense. What do you guys think? What do you think of all these changes that, uh, that Uber is going through? I'm, curi I'm curious, does it really even matter to you? Because as a driver, we drive what's most important, how much we get paid. So if um, these changes help us to get paid more, then we like it. And if we get paid less, we don't like it. And what we've seen over the last four years is we get paid less and less and less. And with AB5, we would have an opportunity to get paid more. Uber and Lyft are ignoring the law and they're finding ways to pay us less and less and less. Today's announcement of uh, being able to set your own price is going to result in you making less money again. And that's not a good thing. So that's how I'm going to wrap it up. All right, that's a wrap. Fist bump to all you drivers out there. Y'all rock it out there every day. I honor you. It's, I'm proud to be a part of the Rideshare Drivers Brotherhood and Sisterhood. Um, thank you for sharing your journey with me. Be safe out there. This is Nomad Jay coming to you live from Bangkok, Thailand, saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.